Mulene Makaya now Tami Akambo, Umbu Isunga, Zundi, Musundisa, Umbemyama, Ozala, Omanzana, Okumalo, Omtu, Om Leche, Maluma Sunditi. Welcome to the show, State of the Arts with Utami Akambo, brought to you by the Creative Passport. In this show, we cover what is happening at the cultural and creative industry in South Africa and abroad. We invite guests to talk about their work. And in some episodes, I personally share my views on some of the burning issues that are happening in the cultural and creative industry in South Africa. We would like to encourage those who have not yet subscribed to our channel to please do so. We are almost 1,000 K subscribers. And today, we are having another special show. This episode is sponsored by our very first sponsor of this show, the University of KwaZulu Natal Center for the Creatives, who are currently uh, organizing the Poetry Africa Festival, which will be taking place from 11 till 16 October 2021, which means it's going to be happening next week from Monday to Friday. Our guest today, we're speaking to some of the poets that will be taking uh, part in the festival. Uh, we've got Umbali, uh, Malimela, we've got Usile, Ntuli, and hoping we'll be joined by Utostin uh, Tebuho uh, on the later on. All of them will be taking part of this year's Poetry at Africa Festival. Let us introduce our guests. And today we're going to do things a little bit different because these are poets. So their introduction will be, they will be offering us some, uh, some performances so that we, we can get to, to feel them, you understand, before we start to engage with them. Our first guest is Mbali Malimela. Mbali Malimela is an Isi Zulu writer and performing poet. As the founder of a poetry uh, brand called Bantu Origin. She holds a strong passion of restoring the love and use of language through poetry. She has been part of numerous poetry platforms, including Poetry Africa in 2018, and as well as the first Affluence Festival on behalf of South Africa. She has had her writings published on the most loved journals, including the Soul Plakis European Union Anthology and Funza Literacy. Mbali has more of her work uh, visualized on her channel on YouTube. Uh, and I went to the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is called Mbali Malimela, which is currently sitting at 1.38K uh, subscribers. So do subscribe to her channel like I personally have done. We need to support each other. Sis Mbali, welcome to the show, Siswa. Um, hello, Ninjani. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Uh, please introduce yourself with one of your, 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 your offerings. Over to you, Siswam. Um, so le, this poem um, is titled Ilanga. It's an Isi Zulu poem, since I'm an Isi Zulu poet. Nokshona walu namusha gube skumbuz uutsingo Vela Walo, Liketi no Bako Ubos, Uma Nilanga, Liguazi Uketa, Eningini, Ubaluleki, Leikini Solel, Ungal Kotla Nango Mus, Boga was Polo Zeleganjan, Isn't the number, Os Pete Zanjini, Aus Kumbuzingan, Zina Manga, Okewa Zishula, Zibopele and Danyeni, Yis Kingazan, Zinunya Nagunesa Zolo, Kupi Loko, Oshelweni, Akka Milingan, Weaz Umona Ungaranan. Uma gonke ogu fisela ogubi, gubona ubnonu e katani seni wako imzamo au kalingan. It's uba lesbi living a pindu akani kuwe, ungumbango kwa bakini, lona nguwe, akeko munyewe sibili. Bayege bala lentini, karate yiko balungele wena ungu wempumele lwezfinini. Buga ilanga lima matera ranjani gema libone la kubako ubusu. Ngokvuga kwa konje kseni kutoba ngezi para para ngezi zota ima fin. Ngokniate lanje kwa kugu kara nuksu kubuti gazi kio sani. Uyimza mo e impumelelo intasi ya kopelo na sezon zulwin. Nukshona kwa loge na mocha gube skumbos. Uguti ngokvela kwa lo likete no bako ubos. Uma nilanga likwazi ukuketa eningini ubaluleki ile ipini isolele. 
ungal kuhua na ngomos. Nako ke mo sisimbali ah lobo, but we are going to talk to sisimbali. We understand her and get to know her uh, much better and her writing. We understand that she will also be taking part uh, in the festival, Poetry Africa Festival. And then our next guest is also Uputi Usi Senduli. Uh, Uputi Senduli is a poet and a classist from uh, Devon. He holds a Master of Arts degree in Classical Civilization and has lectured previously at the University of Free State. Ewa fundi nilo puti, uteta ngezi njozi classical civilization. I was just explaining that he is the author of Ramli, Ushanga 2020, and has had uh, his work uh, published in notable publications such as the Anthology, Years of Fires and Ash, South African Poems of our Decolonization, uh, Uchonatan Ball 2021, and in a well-known journalist such as Lolwe, the Rumpus, and the Johannesburg Review of Books. His poetry is long listed for this year's Sol Plaki EU Poetry Prize. He currently, currently lives in Devon. Putsise, welcome to the show, Putuam Bujan. Onga Pilen Jannonke. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you give us your offering? Uh, as you're welcoming to the show. All right, I'll do just that. Um, so I'll be reading from uh, Years of Fire and Ash, which is also going to be launched at Poetry Africa. So I'm going to be reading my poem, Crowd Gathered Celebrating for a Taste of Blood. It's a long time. Um, so this is the poem. Violence as a pain shed between men. It has been said time and time again, to be a man, one must stay face at all times. It was pain that drove defense against a loss of power. To think how clenched fist was once a symbol of power down the road to grievous bodily harm. Now a symbol of how man will hold on to the pain, never letting go. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. Now let's get to know uh, the poet's Kathy. Sisimbali, let me start with you, Siswam. Uh, uh, can you please uh, tell us more about Ubuntu origin? Because I know uh, you are also involved uh, behind that movement. So um, Ubuntu origin is my business. It's my poetry brand. It's my baby. Um, we are one month old, I think. Uh, so we are selling t-shirts, um, sweaters that have quotes from my poems. Uh, currently we have quotes from a poem titled Impet, which is also on my YouTube channel. Um, so basically the vision is to restore the love of language, of vernacular language in, in particular. So, so far it's going quite well and the response is going quite well as, as well. So. And also, while I'm with you, Sismali, uh, because a lot of people, you understand, especially in the cultural and creative industry, they are scared, you understand, to share their artistic work in their mm -hmm. own language, you understand? We always yeah. feel you have to share your work in English so that to accommodate more people and all those things. You understand? What is your take? Because uh, I know you are very passionate about your language, you understand, and you are not compromising in terms of your, your language. What is your take uh, regarding that? I think you should just stick to what works for you, not for other people. Because I think I've been on an environment that wanted me to change the way I write because of the audience, because of how relevant I might be at that particular environment. So my take is do what works for you, you know? Um, and what works for me is my language, is my vernacular language, which, um, I think is my slogan for this Poetry Africa that will be starting next week uh, to unmute the love of vernacular language. So, mm, mm, mm. Thank you very much. Putsise, let me come to you. Uh, you are a classicist. And yes, Robert is a classicist. Yo, from Japan, and you hold a master's of arts degree in classical civilization. 
Maskali Papu to let's unpack this thing because I've never in my entire life given the classical civilization. Kaskabuli Seputuan, tell us more about what does it mean to be a classicist and also uh, the classical civilization. Hey, cool English. Over to you, Putuan. All right, so I'd, I like to simplify it when I'm explaining to people that it's just ancient history at the end of the day. You have your contemporary history, which is your recent sort of um, what apartheid. You have your, your civil rights movements in the United States. And then we go further back. We start to talk about the Greeks, the Romans, um, the Egyptians. My speciality was with regards to the Egyptians, I did my thesis on uh, Alexander the Great and life after Alexander the Great, which would have been his generals. And it, they, were, they were conquering various countries, um, various states, and um, really assimilating the culture so it would make it easier um, to control them. So, which is what attracted me to the classical civilizations or yeah, ancient history. Um, the foundations of our civilization now. If we, if we were to really sort of unpack where we are now, contemporary South Africa, it's very westernized as much as we are in an African sort of country geographically. Um, and our foundations of this come from classical civilizations, mainly uh, the Romans and the Greeks. Our the very democratic system that we have now is established in Greece as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very important to understand that everything comes from somewhere and uh, classical civilization is the best way for me to sort of understand that. Um, yeah, my parents were very happy to let me go and study this thing that had really long words. I'm not gonna, I'm not cool. And so they said, no, sister, go ahead, do your thing. And yeah, here I am now. But yeah, I hope that answers. Okay. So tell me something, uh, how much are uh, the fund? Like, for example, I went to study a, a theater and, and involved too much in theater acting and blah blah blah. So, how much influence the course that you did, you understand that to, to your work in terms of uh, as a poet and, and stuff, how much influence is it helping you? Yeah, I try to keep them separate. Okay. As much as much as I can, but I won't lie, it has had its influence. Um, I'd like to think of myself as a literary practitioner rather than as a as a as a you know full blown poet poet, sorry. Because uh, you have your spoken word poets and then you have your page poets, whereas I am a page poet. So I think a lot of more a lot more research goes into my work. Um, I have to get my facts correct so I can go through my classics and I can sort of put it in there as well. So it just allows me more depth, um, which I do take from my uh, academic background. I also do read quite widely as well. So I might just read on some psychology as well and incorporate that or read some philosophy, which I did do philosophy as well uh, in university. So yeah, it's just... It's good to have a little bit of, uh, of your facts straight when you write for the page. And yeah, um, not to take away from anybody who writes um, from the heart, who writes more, emotion, more emotional work, but yeah, that's just my approach. Wow. Uh, let me come back to you. You took part in uh, Poetry Africa in 2018. Yeah, well, can you please tell us what was your experience then and what made you to come back uh, uh, this year? We understand that. Can you share your experience? Uh, so I, I was a part of Poetry Africa in 2018 um, as a prelude poet. Um, so basically I was doing an opening for the participants that year. And it was quite overwhelming because uh, we know uh, the role Port Africa has played over the years. So it was something huge for me and receiving an invitation this year to be the participant, I think, yeah, it was a huge thing as well for me. Um, I think the role it has played in South Africa in Deben as well, I think 
that's why I, I kind of joined this year and was excited to be part of it. Mm. Uh, tell us, Uguti, you are saying, Uguti, especially about you, you participate in 2018, you understand? Uvulela, mm. the participants, and this year you are participating. You understand? Yeah. What does it mean for you, you understand, to, to be performing the platform of Fanane Poetry Africa Festival? That is, uh, you know, there are a lot of great artists that have performed in that platform. You understand? But for you, True. what does it mean to you as a, as, as, as a poet? Um, it means I've worked. Um, I've worked a lot. Um, and that is seen not just by Poetry Africa, but it has been seen by people. And I think the response that has been received by them and by me as well, um, I guess it means it means something huge for me. It's huge. So, yeah. Okay, Putsitle, let's come to you. How did you become part of this year's festival? Uh, and also share with us what are your expectations for this festival and uh, beyond it. All right. So yeah, I was just um, I was approached by Pindile Songwa. Um, she just asked me to to join the festival. Um, approached me on Facebook and I agreed. Um, I don't think there's any sort of magical thing that happened. Um, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your second follow-up question. What are the... Yeah, what are your expectations from this year's festival and beyond? All right. Um, for me, uh, I, I, I do respect the festival as well because I think it's probably the only like poetry focused festival that we have in Durban. And uh, Durban is also a UNESCO city of literature as well. So it's, it's very important that we, we live up to that name. So uh, okay. my expectations is for like diverse style of poetry. As I said, there's uh, your page poetry and your, your stage poetry. And also it's good to, to also speak to those who work around poetry like your publishers, I know Bethel Press will be at the, at the festival. And the editor of Gears of Fire and Ash Wamu Imbao uh, will also be at the festival. So it's also good to hear some perspectives outside of poetry as well. So I'm expecting this sort of diverse, um, sort of engaging with, with uh, people around the, the art and craft of poetry. Because to be honest, uh, it doesn't really get as much respect as it deserves when you compare it with fiction and nonfiction. Uh, poetry is seen as a bit of the, the stepchild of literature. So, uh, um, so I'd, I'd want to, 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 to see fit, uh, poetry uh, showing that it's worthy of the respect that it really does deserve. And that's my expectation for, for this uh, Poetry uh, Africa 2021 and beyond. Yeah. Uh, Sikhe Usisimbaline has also shared to Uti uh, what does it mean to be performing um, at the festival of this caliber? We understand apart for Werner as a publisher and also as a poet. What does it mean for you? Oh, sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a publisher, but yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, sir. Yeah, over so to you. Oh, so someone's connecting. Um, yeah, it just means that um, I get to experience a, a home festival. Um, it's 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 great to have something that's close to home, uh, a Durban festival, and yeah, I'm very proud of my city. I include my my city in the work that I do, and yeah, I'm very uh, proud that. Uh, this work that I've been reading in so many different places, I get to read it uh, sort of in a home sort of festival. So that's that's something I'm going to be very proud of that I'm going to really appreciate for a long time to come. Wow. And then, uh, Sisimbali, I know uh, Tristan is going to be joining us uh, uh, shortly. Uh, Sisike, can you tell us, um, uh, I mean, did you Sisike, Sisimbali? Uh, what drew you to poetry? And uh, can you please share in your own views 
Yabasana, the state of poetry in South Africa general? Um, so there was nothing in particular that drew me into poetry because I started poetry at a very young age. I do not even know what I was doing at that time. But I think as time goes, I'm being drawn into poetry. And what is drawing me more is, of course, the response towards my work. Um, the testimonies I've been receiving ever since I started visualizing my work and ever since I started performing. Um, I forgot the second question. Uh, what is your, your take in terms of the state of the poet generally in South Africa? Uh, well, I think I'm quite proud because we are getting there compared like to other platforms. We haven't been doing that much, you know. We haven't been uh, visualizing our work, uh, being out there and everything. So I think we are getting there. Um, and we are able to respond to a lot of things that are going on currently. So, yeah, I have hope. Do, do you feel, Uti, especially the Venek, you understand that uh, when you are doing Msebinzi, uh, whether in African language, it's Zulu, Tonga, Vendas, Tosa, do you feel, Uti, the mainstream in the poetry is pro providing that platform? Or you still feel Uti English is still given uh, a big chunk? Or what is your your your, your take? Yeah, English is giving a, is giving a big a big chunk. But um, in South Africa, I think vernacular language is quite recognized. But when we go internationally, I still think English poetry is doing so much better than vernacular language. So yeah, but in South Africa. It's not that bad. It is bad, but it's not that bad. Oh, Kubapukele Basekaya, as we are saying, we are talking to a poet who are going to be taking part in the Africa uh, Poetry Festival, which is taking place from next week, um, 11 till 16. Uh, Sismali, uh, it's mm -hmm. also important to say, you understand, uh, when you've got the opportunity, because you are doing a Sizulu poet. Already you are international, you understand? Because to be part of a, a poetry a, a Africa festival, which is recognized internationally, then who, who internationally already says one. Uh, to the audience, in the beginning of the show, I announced to we are going to have uh, three guests. We, are, we understand that uh, we are talking to Sismali, we are talking to Uputi, uh, Sihe, and Sismali did give us a, 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 a performance here at Kekasi Vula, Wasi Blesa, and Uputi Sihe. And our third guest is uh, Trusten Tebuho Ribika. Uzan Lugi is his name, hey, it's tricky. Uh, Trusten Tebuho, known as, uh, on stage as Clear. He's a South African poet from Harangua, a Pretoria. Artistically found him at a young age and developed a heartfelt passion for hip hop and poetry. As 2013 came along, he released a free download, downloadable EP that consists of four hip hop tracks and three spoken word poems, which gave him the opportunity to perform on stage, such as Night of the Poets at the State Theater. A year later, he released a couple of singles, and in 2015, he started a poetry movement uh, for the youth in his community known as Big Child. In 2016, he produced, directed, and performed in his own uh, poetry production at the State Theatre title, speaking from experience, growth, with a jazz band and a four female choir. In 2017, he hosted the annual Twani Speak Out Loud Poetry Competition and performed at the Opikopi Festival in Limpombo and had the privilege to go to Washington, D.C. for a two-week poetry tour hosted by Jonathan B. Tucker. In 2018, he won the award for Poet of the Year at the Word and Sound Poetry League and was also one of the guest poets at the Naked Word Festival that was held in Cape Town. He co-hosted Words and Melodies radio show at SMU-FM 97.1 alongside Stan uh, 007. In 2021, he released a spoken word single titled Dying Inside My Mouth. Welcome to the show, my brother. How are you? 
I'm good in you, man. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be in the spaces. And yeah, poetry Africa, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> in that spirit, can you, did you prepare any offering for us just to get a taste of your work? Nah, get a, just to get a taste. Okay. Yeah. I got the poem. I got the poem. I got the poem. Okay. There is no difference between night and day in Palestine. The sun and the moon are out of Palestine's view. The earth and the atmosphere always collide in Palestine. Space and time are out of mind in Palestine. Heaven is trying to find its footing in Palestine while hell has drenched its heart all over Palestine. The people there eat bullets and explosions for breakfast and drink it all down with each other's blood through eyesight. Fresh air is a foreign thing to their lungs, for they only know how to inhale death and army tanks. The only rain they know is bombs dropping from the sky. Warplanes are camouflaged as clouds. Landmines are sprouting out like surface, like weeds, and the grounds are holding spirits hostage and they are restless. This place is the perfect definition of the Valley of Dry Bones. Children use torn down homes as pillows at night and they sleep with one eye open for the rapid rattling of rifles and lullabies. Gaza is only stripped to the core for the world wants to get rich from its rich black soul. And the only way to survive there is sadly to die. Fighting is the daily bread and they have no choice but to stomach it. Family members only recognize each other by being apart with the mother's leg parts here and the arm parts over there, the father's head parts there and parts of his fingers are all over there, the sister's hips part ways there and there and the ears are partly somewhere over there, the brother's heart beats in parts there and his guts are apart everywhere. Even River Jordan washes its hands off of this land for it has tried to baptize and cleanse it off of its bloodstains. How long must freedom be a distant teasing taste to Palestine's tongue? And how long must freedom be a power struggle to keep heads above waters? So maybe God can see all of this for his eyes are drowning in Palestine's tears. Maybe the devil is nowhere to be found for this is the sum of all of his fears with palms kissing each other and knees planted to the ground is not the only best way to face this lingering pain until worldwide efforts are made to stand with this nation, to constantly remind it to smile without angry faces, to bleed without talking or living, to be able to see tomorrow without holding today for ransom, before the only answer be for the world to come to an end, for Palestine to find and rest in peace. Mm. Uh, for that blessing. On that note, uh, Justin, can you yes. tell us how did you become part of this year's festival and also what are your expectations uh, for this festival and beyond? Um, how, I got part, how I got to be part of the Poetry Festival is that um, I got contacted by one of the uh, organizers of the Poetry Festival. They first asked me, what is my style of poetry and how do I tackle with poetry? How do I feel about poetry? And then I answered the questions. And then I think two weeks or three weeks later or a month later, then I got an email. They asked me like, would I like to be part of the poetry festival um, this year? And I was like, hey, why not? Why would I say no to such beautiful platforms like Poetry Africa, Yo, you know? But um, one, of the, one of the biggest things that I'm looking forward to for Poetry Africa is to see new and beautiful poetry faces and to learn as much as possible from poets from near and far. And then we can um, cultivate a poetry community uh, near and far. And then we can, you know, make poetry thrive in these uh, difficult times in our lives in this day and age. Yeah. And then uh, last question before I go back to, to the other guys. Uh, yeah. What drew you, because I saw you are also involved in hip hop and yeah. uh, what is the state of our poetry in South Africa apart from when I want to hear what do you think is the state of hip hop in South Africa, general, your personal views? 
personal, isn't it? Okay, no, personal, yeah. no. Yeah, thank you, personal. Okay, um, I grew up uh, um, in primary school, like I've been with, with hip hop and rap since primary school. Um, I've learned like from your Bone Thugs, your Tupac, your Biggie Smalls, you know, the most, you know, then I got to know hip hop guys in South Africa, like your uh, H2O, like Morafe, like your, you know, the, 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 um, your Invase, and all of that, you know, and I, I learned a lot from them that cultivated my skills in hip hop. Um, but right now, my personal views of poet of, of hip hop in Zanzi, ish. I, I, I would I would love to, for 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 hip hop in Zanzi to to cultivate more of Mutwago than trap music, you know, because Double HP may his soul rest in peace. He was the pioneer. He was one of the pioneers of Mutwago Mutwago rap, and it was like flourishing. And I think it was one of the things that made hip hop and rap in South Africa, very unique, you know? And I think that was where the culture and tradition of music in South Africa flourished a lot in Mutoko rap amongst other things like Mbatanga and, you know, but it was very original and it was, it was stemming out, you know, because like there's like in hip hop, like your Boobab, there's like your um, Crank, there's all of these things, you know? So us standing out with Mutoko rap would have, like made us unique and to thrive a lot. That's why like your WHP went to America to go and, you know, freestyle at uh, uh, Sway and Tech and all these things. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so next week we are going to have uh, a jam-packed uh, program. And today we are speaking to some of the uh, performers that will be blessing the stage. Don't forget the festival is between 11 to 16 uh, October, and it will be done online. There are performances at 11, at 1, at 3, at 5, and at 7. So every two hours from Monday to Friday, go and check out the Center for Creative uh, Arts. You will find something. Sis Mali, let me come to you, Sis one. What can audience expect you uh, in this year's Poetry Africa Festival? Um, so on this year's Poetry Africa Festival, I will be performing live. Um, Poetry Africa is one live event. I'm not sure, I think two, but I'll be on one of them, which is on Friday. Um, and it's an all women event. Um, I'll be performing amongst legendary women, not just women, um, like So I guess they can expect something legendary from me too. <laughs> And then before we vote, why, in your own views, why should people understand the bother to go and watch the Africa Poetry Festival? Why should uh, this Lindin must I go and say, well, hey, I want to see what's happening? In your, in your views, why people must make sure that they are watching this year's festival? Yo, like this year, it has more poets than it has ever had before. Um, I think if you're interested in arts in general, because there are even people who do hip hop and poetry like Tostin here. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot to look forward to. So I think that's why they should go check it out. Uh, Sister Tuli, what can audience expect from you in this festival? And why do you feel now good people must definitely watch this year's festival? All right, well, from me, they can expect a few uh, poems from my book, Rumbling, which I released last year. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna read from there. I have an event on Monday called Cape to Cairo with a, a number of uh, sort of African based uh, poets. So it's quite international. And uh, yeah, if, the, if people wanna be part of that sort of uh, machine and movement, then they should come and join us. And then I also have another event on Tuesday night at seven, where um, I read uh, one of my poems and there's gonna be some dancers doing some really nice uh, hand movements and uh, really interpreting um, the poem to some nice music. There's a video and everything. So that's gonna be really nice to see. Um, so yeah, it's something to anticipate because yeah, I think it came out really great. I had a look at the, at the video and yeah, they're going to put them all together and yeah, I, I encourage everyone who can to come and see both shows 
Monday uh, at one, I think, and Tuesday at seven. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna enjoy both. And yeah, it's gonna be a great, a great event, a great festival. And yeah, uh, people should come so they can be a part of history. Uh, Tustin, your views. Uh, what can the audience expect from you in this year's festival? And why should people uh, uh, go in big numbers to watch this year's Poetry Africa Festival? I mean, like, this is Poetry Africa, man. Why not? Why not come to, you know, one of the biggest poetry festivals in the world, you know, and in Africa itself, you know? Um, they should come through and indulge in as much poetry as possible because we'll be having poets from overseas and we'll be having a lot of poets from this continent and a lot of poets from South Africa itself, you know? And uh, it'll be best to come through because um, we only know the, the, the poets in our streets, if I may say so. So we might as well come here and indulge and learn as much as possible from other poets, from other cities, from other provinces, from other continents, you know? And uh, me personally, I'll be bearing everything. I'll be giving my all, you know, cause I, I would love to share bits and pieces of myself, pun intended, with the world and with everybody so that, you know, as much as poetry is a beautiful thing and it heals the soul. So why not come to Poetry Africa and? and you know, heal as many souls as much as possible at one go. You know? mm. Before we close, uh, Sikhe, I want to, to ask you something. Uh, can you please tell us the importance of publishing your own work and how do you go about that? Because I saw in the beginning of the show, you showed us your, your book and most of our work, we understand that we, we don't publish it. We understand that and then when we pass on uh, people can trace our work but what is your take in terms of uh, the importance of publishing um, one's own work all right um it's it's i wouldn't say it's it's like very important uh it really depends on like what you needed to do what you need your work to do um i wouldn't say um people need to uh, invest themselves into that uh, only if it means a lot to them it, if it means uh, for me it means to have a legacy like you implied just now um, I think in the future my work will still be there um, even long after I'm gone so that's the meaning that it has for me but for some um, they might not really have like the greatest reason to have it published like you might like something now and then in a few years you want to be published then and then you see that it wasn't really like what you needed to be at the time. And yeah, publishing does require a lot of patience with the work, a lot of reworking, re-editing. And yeah, sometimes people are in a rush to get published. Um, I was in a rush to get published with my very first book, Stranger. And uh, now when I look at it, I, I, I see that I can do so much better that, than that. So yeah, it's really, down to uh, your motives and why you want to do it. Um, so I wouldn't say it's that overly important to do. Um, and there's different ways to preserve the work as well. Uh, I'm sure Tosted recorded his work. Um, that's his form of, of, of publishing as well, it's preserved. So there's an audio recording of, of him uh, reciting his poems or even rapping. Um, and yeah, there's various ways we can go about uh, leaving a legacy, leaving our, our imprint that we were here. So uh, when you ask me, is it important to publish? I'd say it depends. Um, for me, I, I leave my legacy with my book. Um, but yeah, it's all dependent on that individual. And for your second question, how do you go about publishing? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it is very tough, but yeah, um, um, I also like to sort of give this information away as well, because some people can be quite guarded, like, if too many people know about it, then, you know, but yeah, I don't, I don't believe in that. So what I would encourage um, sort of new writers to do is to, to submit work to journals once they're ready, once they feel that the work is, is at a point where they can start sending it out. Um, there are a couple of them in South Africa, but not a lot. There's New Coin, um, which is based in, in Makanda, sort of formerly known as Graham Sound. 
I went to university at Rhodes University, so it sort of linked with um, the institution as well. So you can send out work to Newcoin, and so you send out say three poems, and then they they choose maybe one or all three, and then they give you back the feedback and get published there. And there's also New Contrast, which is um, one that is probably, I'd say it's, it's a leader now. A uh, couple of panelists at, uh, at Poetry Africa are affiliated with New Contrast. Um, same thing, you send out poems to them and um, they give you feedback and they publish what they publish and they tell you no to a certain piece that is not really read it for them. Um, so yeah, you just do this, you publish to these journals, you send work to these journals, and then eventually uh, you'd have a whole sort of stack of poems that you got, got published. And of course, you'd want to have some that have not been released as well. And then you put it together and then you start sending out to the, the big book, book, book publishers. And that's what I've, I've been taught to do. But um, there are other ways to bypass this. If you're a spoken word poet um, and you have an, enough of a following, you can put together your poems, uh, send them to an editor, of course, pay for an editor to look through them. And then, yeah, you can, you can bypass all that and then you can get published that way as well. There's, there's various ways to get published, but the most important thing is getting your name out there and um, having people that will actually buy your, your, your poetry book because yeah, uh, poetry is not really that supported in terms of a literary format in the country. Um, not to say that it's, it's bad, but uh, people tend to look at your, your fiction and the most popular that I've noticed is your nonfiction. So your political books, um, your Stellenbosch mafia books, all of that stuff. That's sort of the most popular. So yeah, poetry, it's hard, but I think it's possible to, to, to publish. It's, it's hard though, it's gonna be, it's gonna require a lot of patience, yeah. And uh, since Mbali, let me bring you in because you've got um, also a YouTube channel that is doing well. You've got about uh, 1.38 um, uh, subscribers, which is doing well. And I've, I've looked at some of the, 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 the work. It's amazing work. And I know you've also, um, uh, publish on, on channels like the Sol Plachi European Union Anthology and Funza uh, Literacy. Is there anything you want to add from what Uputsikhe was saying? Um, I don't think I relate much with books because uh, we're with uh, a YouTube channel, it's all about creating an, a, an email address and then you start publishing your work on, well, yeah, it is publishing on, on YouTube channel. I guess uh, what helps um, is advertising your, your work more, uh, posting frequently, not that I post frequently, but yeah, I guess that quite helps as well. And just being out there and being a, 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 a people's person, you know, yeah. Uh, before we close, uh, Toxin, let me come to you, my brother, before you guys uh, bless us with, uh, your last offering. Uh, when I was reading your 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 your, your bio, you you are also involved in uh, speak child. Uh, in that moment, can you please uh, tell us a little bit so that we we understand the work that you do in the communities? Uh, speak child poetry movement is my is my baby. It's my baby. Um, so I started it in 2015. So what we do is that we meet every third Sunday of every month at the union buildings. And we come together, we do workshops, we do performance workshops, and then we have open mics, you know? So it is an open platform for anybody and everybody who is in and around Pretoria itself. So they can come through and then we can come and break bread in terms of poetry and uh, grow and do the most with poetry as well. So right now I am mentoring roughly 20 people so I've been gathering poets slowly but surely from 2015, and um, it, it has grown. It is growing tremendously, and uh, a lot of poets are growing from it. And uh, yeah, that's uh, so. We also have like a WhatsApp group where we have like weekly challenges. 
we share books, we share poetry books, and we do challenges. I give them challenges, weekly challenges. So even this week, like I'm giving them a challenge where they have to like interpret a picture and then they have to turn a picture into a poem. So that's what we basically do. We grow like a sort of like a, a home away from home type of a thing. So, yeah. Okay, we are going to close this show uh, differently. Oputsite is going to offer us our, our one reading from his book, Usisimbali, because Usisimbali did not prepare the second performance. Uzas Bizela is Takazelo, Zake, we understand, especially since uh, <laughs> a proud against Zulu. And then Tostin will give us uh, a last um, uh, offering uh, from his writing, and then we close the show. So we're going to do it, you understand? Immediately, Oput Sikhe is done. Usis Mali will come in. Immediately, she's done. We will, Tostin will come in, and I'll officially close the show. Let's go. All right. Um, the poem I'm going to be reading is from my book. Uh, not like the previous book. I think get both of these books, but this is my book, Rumbling. It's available at Take A Lot for 87 rand. It's on special. <laughs> so you should go and get it. So the poem I'm going to be reading is called Durban. Okay. Eyes sight see trees, the land, same eyes, deeming our beauty primitive, hands, bricks, the layers, fields, whole fields, institutionalized, the body is followed by the water, flow and its purpose, the ocean, with all the commotion, my fear is, were I yet to listen to the waves, before waves relent and calmness, falling over the sea, mouth of ocean and swallowed within depths of the belly, will we find Chief Bambata, because after him, our hands, lines on our palms, drawn to labor, and crashing sound of Gandhi's voice like waves over Bambata's bones, and so the story goes, and ocean, won't you tell me of bones, salt content and the bodies that may seem familiar to you. And so the story goes, on water in all directions, the ocean and its purpose, water diluting blood, sea salt of the ocean, bodies swallowed by the sea. And for a long time, the wait until the wave relents, and when it does, now to move as the water does, of all the bodies lost, to the mouth of ocean, some will still listen in hope, may still not be confused with silence, may new life form in the closure, and may the sound of still, calm, and tranquil be received with the heart warm at the ocean. Thank you. Um, so, um, I'll do a second poem instead of my clan names. Um, so this poem is titled Bajele. Watsi Bajele ukuthi ngoba selkelwa kuhlula kusho ukuthi sonke sengimele lusuhlule. Watsi ungakhohle kubajele ukuthi njalo umakhulu nya ngothando nocabanga ngomuntu noso wedlule hayi ngawe nokufumbetha umhlaba nobuhle ukukhulula nenkomo. Wati banunu bebuk, baveze lugusi la mazo bak chik chelenga o ashaima pamalug, bachele banga lenzi mezi put, loko ksem zimbeni axi zizi bazi yonking gane maiza luya kungwa bachel, uguti lom zimba mningi ga kulu wutinga makabata mbalu sunga landu la bakombis, ugutu faza nebako sub twelenge oma ukwez koloza kwa no kusho yizo bianu ka tandula, baze basizu slilo sabakala beko no tandu eni yizo asna tula iba yingange no mandula kula. Bakolo zele mechweni bebula wa eza abizin jolobane tubula. Lol suga tingangu lindele batazele. Ugutu yi se shezo matamba sabam shope. 
upinda gata tu tota ba bunga kali sine zingu kuzkuza lungi le ba pimbeli tazi pimbeli tazi la also zola gani nuno nile zingu lo singa parati swayo iskunda nguza kile ba tabeli ba vezelu kutu tando la kuni mvelo serwa zulele utizele ugutu bunifu ba mbelele stindi nesgati za simple kau kuzewe na wetembe kiba vikeli ba kwa hii sugu tabanjenga au abasa katale luka iko na tando uba vezelu izimbabu ba zboneli ugutu ma Alu sego ba inzama tega kwa bona banga kake kaba mbuleni ge kau chole sukube ni sako o kati wa utunga tangu zozonge sukuba baluleni unwelela kubache uguti sente ni sene uguti nzokula ndaon sio zina sugu na njalo ma kulunishi ya ubache uguti le yonan kundi utando wazui palangi shule ubache. Bachelor, sister, bachelor, bachelor. Yeah, tell them, tell them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me close it. An animal only attacks when it is provoked or when it feels threatened. And we humans are no different. We are also animals of the same nature. For we are the concrete jungle, constantly fighting to keep the inner beast tamed, but we always fail. We are a threat to ourselves as well, especially when our animalistic instinct comes out to play, especially when we get to step into our wild side and can't contain our basic urges. We stalk each other's souls daily, ready to pounce on each other's hearts with our sharp fangs dripping with venom to poison each other's faith and hope we never pause to print our paws on each other's feelings and rattle our tail to wrap ourselves around each other's fears, we would find it appealing to peel each other to the soul, to see the Red Sea filled with each other's blood streaming down the streets, our jaws snap at anything that comes to the edge of the watering hole, to take a bite at any living thing that comes to quench its thirst. Some of us are wolves in sheep clothing going to church to pray on vulnerable prey, then howl at the full moon on bended knees begging for forgiveness. Some of us get to meet and call each other soulmates. After that, we let our souls mate, then skin each other's souls clean, and then us mates turn on each other and call each other snakes. Isn't it weird to find a dog accompanied by chips on the side and the same dogs call each other cats? What kind of a domestic pet love affair is this? If there's always something fishy happening where sharks come out and swim on land. They have a whale of a time, especially when they bank on the riverside, the hyenas waiting in the alley with terrifying cackles, with devil-like smiles aiming for the pulse and throat, while vultures gather on street corners for a big scavenger hunt with an opportunity to stick their talents into hollow bone pockets. The big brother is the eagle roaming the sky, watching over every breath, and at any slight wrong movement, they will dive down and catch us off guard. The only time we bear to hug each other is when we claw at each other's backs, or when we flee to suck on the living daylights of each other's blood. On the other side of this landscape, there are pigs in governing positions, justifying their filthy ways of living or stuffing their mouths with bottomless power. Then they will be on the move to find new ways to deceive us, is cheat us. We hope that they will consider our feelings, but you know, a leopard never changes the spots. But we will tunnel our way out of this reality with inner arm strength and gather our ish like dung beetles to butter our bread so that we can fly. For we are fish swimming against the current streams of life or cows and bees looking for the land of milk and honey. We shall swing from one tree vine to the next to be rooted or migrate with the seasons to look for greener pastures. This is the nature of man to seek, to hunt, to devour, to destroy whatever that may stand in our way. For we are beasts walking on two legs, camouflaged in silk and wool. It is ingrained in our DNA that it is survival of the fittest. Kill or be killed. We are animals biting our way out, trying to be free, trying to exist, running the race to reach the top of the food chain only to call ourselves gods. We are heard that does not want to listen. It does not have any sense of direction. All we want to graze on all kinds of flesh on a silver platter without the catch. This beast within us as well and cannot be contained. We are the highs, the lows of our cause and effect. We have defied the laws of the jungle. That is why Mother Nature is coming for us.
Wow. Oh, next week is from Monday to Friday. Yes. Uh, Paul Africa Festival will be taking place uh, at 11, uh, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. And today we were talking to some of the poets that will be uh, blessing us next week. Uh, thank you very much, Sikhen Tuli. Thank you very much, Tostin. Thank you very much, um, Bali Malimela. It was great to uh, engage with you. Uh, thank you very much to everyone that has tuned in um, in our channel. Uh, uh, the state of the art with Tami Akambongo. To those who have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, next week, we are also having a special show where we are going to be talking to some of the portfolio parliament committees on sports, arts, and culture. And the political party will be answering the question why should cultural and creative industry practitioners vote for their party? Uh, so uh, do subscribe on our channel from me. Utame kambo umbu yisunga lezundi musonji som vemnyama o zalwa gomanzana o kumalo omtungwa omleke niti makbe kosi kume.